Watch Destiny Matters here on REST TV, Thursday and Sunday nights with Pastor Charles Casabanti. Praise the Lord, somebody give him praise. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. You may have your seat. Let's con just continue from that scripture. Um, the Reverend Nancy said it with, and I, I thought that we, we could just go, um, you know, deeper into it. We are talking about the mystery of asking. Before I even go into depth of the mystery of asking, l let me tell you something. Do you know that very many people have never asked God, but they assume they have asked God? There, there are things you thought you have ever talked to God about, but you talk to your friends, you talk to your pastor you thought about it but you have never talked to God about those things there, there's the other very important thing about your prayers I think it's also important to have prayers written down when people have written down prayers it, they indicate a seriousness about what you're praying about do you know that most, by, most prayers we read of in scripture are written down for example our Lord's prayer we would have never known it but Christ prayed it and it's written down. The priesthood prayer in John 17 is written down. Because these prayers where people prayed and men had them praying. So ask yourself a question. But have I really ever asked God for this thing? You know, it is very important to understand. Sometimes we, we have complained about it. Sometimes we have murmured about it. But have you ever asked God about a thing? Because if the promise is that God can never lie or God can never withhold from us any good, James 1.17 from Wednesday we saw, every good and perfect gift comes from God, from the Father in whom there's no shadow of turning, the Father of all lights in whom there's no shadow of turning. It means that God, by all means, he has given us a continuity that when I ask, when I ask, he is obligated to answer because I'm his child. Now, but have you ever asked? Um, last night, the Holy Spirit was um, talking to me about something that was interesting and I wasn't thinking about it like that for example now in Uganda churches are closed yeah because of COVID and uh, it's really not you know because of you know when you think about it uh, the markets are open we have a place called Chikubo it is busy there's no social distancing so it's not really that there is you know COVID restrictions why churches are being closed but the pastors and the churches have talked about it they have complained to the government. People talk, talk about it in their houses. I myself have talk, talked about it. The Holy Spirit inspired me yesterday and asked me, but have you ever prayed about it? Have you ever asked God, please open our churches? And it's possible. There are so many things here. Somebody here can even be saying, God, God, how many will come up? but yet you have never sat down and told him Jesus I need a husband you've never some of you here right now the catastrophe can happen now if God gives a blank check and he says fill in what you want there are many people in this building and those online who don't even know what they want from God. Do you know that we have got people who come to pray with no prayer points? Pastor calls for prayer and fasting says, to gain that one is not to So you show up and there is nothing you're praying about totally. Like there's nothing. That's why prayer becomes boring. Prayer becomes with no impact in your life because there is nothing. Now, this prayer, all prayer is not asking. Uh, look at Ephesians 6 with me quickly. Ephesians 6. There's something we call all kinds of prayer. Praise God. All kinds of prayer. Uh, 618 
Uh huh. It says what? It says, and pray in what? Pray in the spirit. Are you there, Ephesians 6? Or you're reading something else? I'm also reading another, another scripture. You know, in the, it, it, we are in a school of prayer, so you have to have Bible, notebook. You know, I know when I can preach it, but now just have your Bible and your notebook and just follow through. Praise God. Uh huh. It says what? Pray always with all prayers and supplications, praying in all occasions. And with all kinds, my Bible NIV says all kinds, which means that there are many kinds of prayer. When the Bible here talk, talks about kinds, it's talking about different approaches to God of prayer uh, as we come to God. There, is a, there can be a prayer of repentance. There can be a, a prayer of asking God. There, there can be a prayer of deliverance. There can be a prayer of they, 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 this warfare. Now, the challenge is that some people think that prayer is only about warfare. Like the moment they say, let, let us pray, they begin. I take authority on every spirit in hell, every demonic force, every powers of darkness. Now, not every prayer is going to be warfare. Prayer has got different kinds of prayer. And Paul is saying here in Ephesians 6, Pray with all kinds of prayer. You know why he said that? Because the theme of Ephesians 6 is about spiritual warfare. From verse 10, it's talking about being strong in the Lord and the power of his might and putting on the strong armor, dressing up with the full armor to contend with the, with the arrows of the enemy. So he made sure that now that they understand warfare, they should also know that there are other kinds of prayer. Sometimes God is going to call you to pray for the nation. Or for the city. Uh, or pray for other people. The other thing that is also very, very key. Is that your prayers should not be filled up with yourself all the time. It is a very, very immature level of prayer. When your prayers are selfish. The Bible says in the book of Job 42. And Job prayed for what? For his friends. And God did what? God blessed him double. Sometimes you need to learn to pray for other people. Walk into prayer on behalf of somebody else. Oh, are you hearing me? And when you learn to do that, God begins to bless you. Praying for others is, is important. Amen. Because even Paul makes it down. Look at that verse in fullness. Ephesians 6 and 18. Let's read it all, all of it in fullness. Uh -huh. I pray and pray in what? In the spirit. Uh-huh. Can you get a microphone, Sister Christian? Praying in what? The microphone is on. Just speak aloud. Yep. Uh huh. Um, it says yes. Ephesians six eighteen. That's right. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. Uh huh. Being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Can you find the NIV version for me? Yep. And pray in the spirit on all occasions. That's right. With all kinds of prayers and requests. Oh, with all kinds of prayers and requests. And in all occasions. It means you, you, you pray when you are feeling good. You pray when you're feeling low. You pray when you're under attack. You pray when you're having victory. All occasions. And in the spirit. Uh huh. With this mind. With this in mind, yes. be alert and always keep on praying for all the Lord's people. Always keep on praying for all God's people. So Paul is saying one of the important things is that learn to involve others in your prayer. Learn to pray for, if you're going to have an effective prayer life, learn to go to prayer and not just pray for yourself. Mention somebody else. Amen. And don't just say, God, I am Lord, Christian, like, try to know what you're praying about for somebody. Because the requests begin to be clear. I'm, I'm with somebody. Amen. Now, if, because what we're, what we're looking for right now is effectiveness in prayer. I want to be effective in prayer. I want to pray until something happens. I want to push. Oh, are you hearing me? Amen. I want to see something happening in my prayer. Amen. Look to never tell them prayer works. And I must have a testimony. And I must have a testimony.
testimony. Praise God. Amen. Look at Paul also asking for prayer requests. Verse 19. Paul is praying. He's asking for a prayer request. Uh -huh. Pray also for me. Pray for me also. In other words, pray for your pastor. Pray for the preachers. Praise God. Uh huh. That whenever I speak mm. words may be given to me so that I'm, I will fearlessly make known yeah. the mystery of the gospel. Praise God. So praying on all occasions. Write this down if you're caring to write and you have a notebook. God does nothing but in answer to prayer. Mm. Well, I'm going to make it clear for you. God does nothing but in answer to prayer. It simply means whatever God will do in our domain will always be a response to a prayer. Amen. Amen. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Somebody needs to cut this tonight. You can run with this and go home. Everything God will do in your life in your, if it is God it has to be in response to a request. Amen. Okay. Let me leave let me, let me use uh, Reverend Nancy's uh, analogy. If the police is to come to your house, it has to be in response to a dial. It has to be in response to a dial. Someone has to call. Praise God. Uh, the, God is waiting for your call. Amen. And the call comes through prayer. Amen. Jeremiah 33, verse 3. Call unto me and I'll do it. Yeah, I want to answer. I want to respond to the call. Amen. So it is always in response to a prayer. Oh my God. Amen. The, the verse that we have read, the chapter that the Reverend Nazar read in the beginning, First John chapter 5 and verses 14, it says we have this what? We have this confidence Amen. that if we ask of anything in his name, he does what? He hears, oh come on, people of God. We, we just read the verse a few minutes ago. He hears us. And now if he hears us. Oh. So we, we know now we pray without doubting that, that he hears us. I'm talking about the mystery of asking. Have you talked to God about a thing? I'm not talking about you writing it as a plan. Some of you have it as a plan. I will build a good house with seven bedrooms. Have you asked God for it? Some of you have got a list of what your wife should be like. But have you talked to God about it? There is a mystery in scripture called ask and you shall receive. Luke 11. Let's begin now. Mary, brother, seek a day. Luke chapter number 11. Reverend, you've been reading so well. Let's read from, from, from verse 9. We'll pick it from there. Luke 11 and verse 9. Verse 9. So I say to you, yep. ask and it will be given to you. Mm. Seek and you will find. Yeah. Knock and the door will be opened to you. It is right there hidden in scripture. In plain sight. God is talking about asking. He's saying if you're going to ask, it's going to be given to you. I'm waiting for an ask, a church that can ask. A lot of people have defamed this level of prayer as begging from God. And when you hear preachers talking about it, they say, don't go as beggars. Don't beg God. No, God has put a clause in scripture. You can ask. The thing is that many people have never asked God about some things. That's right. Have we asked God about numbers? Have we asked God about his power? God has given us a free, a free check, a free will. He says, go and ask me of anything and I will answer. Praise God. Ask and it shall be given. So as long as I step into the asking place, I must be expectant to receive. Amen. So we are asking God that this year he will increase the grace upon us. Amen. We are asking God that he shall deliver us from everything that strains us. Amen. We are asking God that he shall open doors Amen. Like, like never before. Ask. Learn to ask God. Learn to kneel by your beds and tell God, I'm asking you, Lord. That you may deliver me from being a tenant, my God, Abaya, and promote me to becoming a, 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 a house owner, a property owner. Oh, the amens are good in the house. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna believe God tonight. Somebody must become a property owner in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Oh, look to a woman next to you and tell them you are a property owner. You are a house owner. My God. Somebody shout amen. amen. Ask. Learn to ask God. Has Listen, let nobody tell you you cannot ask God. Many of us, by the way, have never prayed about it. I'm telling you. Look at things in your life. God challenged me yesterday. He said, you're all talking about 60 days of the churches in Uganda. But you're looking at the government to open. Have you ever asked me to open up the churches? Do you know I saw today, there's a new COVID violent coming out of Colombia called Mu. So, so there's COVID Mu. M-U. After we have seen the Delta variant coming from India. There's another one coming called from Colombia called Mu. So if we do not ask God even to remove lockdowns, these guys have a, have a big plan. <laughs> Somebody can, can now declare another lockdown in America without you knowing. If we don't ask God, some things are not moving. But if we ask God, it says it shall be done what? So for me, once I had that last night, I told God, please open us up again. We want to fellowship back again. We want to preach the gospel from other pulpits. And the Lord, I know he is about to grant it. Whether the governments want to close us, God will keep us open. Shout yes! Have you ever asked God? Some of you, some of you have never asked God. You've told God what you want. Yeah. So you go to God and tell him, I want a woman who's like this. Lord, I'm informing you, this is a woman I've seen. But you've never gone to ask God. From the petty things to the greater things, God hears prayer. When, you know, I prayed about my baby, uh, my daughter. I told God exactly what I wanted her to, to, to look like. Because I know she's a combination of me and my wife. I know some good things about my wife. I know some good things about myself. So I prayed every good thing for me to go to her. And every good thing for my wife to go to her. Because I told her, because I, I prayed that she may be as beautiful as my wife. But I also said some things that are about me to be a part of her life. And I'm telling you something, when I look at this girl. Mm, she's a combination of these things. Praise God. Talk to God. Oh, Zele Bagade Shakaya. Someone shout, I'm going to ask. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. The mystery of asking. James chapter 1, verses numbers, uh, uh, number 5, 6. My reader, please. James Jacobo. James chapter 1 verse 6 I think let's begin from verse 5 Ben Sir Moses read Yeah Yeah From 5 5 5 Uh-huh yeah. If any of you lacks wisdom let him ask of God. Oh, who gives generously oh, without finding fault or without reproach? James chapter 1 verse 5. That's where we are people. Oh my God. If anyone lacks it means God give us a free pass. If there's a lack in your life, learn to ask. For the, 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 the Bible says, He gives genuinely without reproach. Uh huh. And is generous in His giving. Verse number six. But when you ask, it's important that your asking must be in faith. When you ask, it must be connected to faith. Oh, praise the living God. Uh huh. Without doubting. It means that the problem why we are not receiving 
It's, be, it's, it's not because he cannot answer. It's because of our doubting. For the, the Bible says, because one who doubts is like the wave of the sea, blown and tossed by the wind. It means that God cannot deal with the doubting mind. You need to go to God with this confidence. First John chapter 5 verse 14. We have this confidence that he hears us. So you have to go with the confidence that I know that God will answer my prayer. Not I'm trying. I am sure. Are you hearing me? You're not trying God. You are sure he has the ability to do what you're asking him to do. Faith in God, knowing and having confidence that God will answer prayer is the highest, is the highest, is the highest level of worship. Let me say it better. When you begin to have confidence that God will answer your prayer, it is the highest form of worship. It is telling God, I honor you. I know you can heal. I know you, you can remove this mountain. I know that you can remove this problem out, out of my life. That is what they call worshiping God. You worship God by telling him exactly, have, having that great confidence in him that is going to do it in your life. So doubting and having double mind hinders us from, from receiving from what we are asking for from the presence of God. Amen. Look at verse number seven. There is a clear statement there. James chapter one, verse number seven. Uh -huh. Let not that man even have a little thinking. Or think at all. Uh -huh. oh, oh, That man should not think at all that he will receive anything from God. You cannot approach God and say, I don't know if you'll do it, Lord, but I'm here. I, I don't know if you're going to move in my life, but I'm here. I'm trusting that, you know. It says, let not that person suppose that he can receive anything from God. Verse 8. Uh, yeah. God sees instability in you. One minute, you're saying, Lord, I believe you. Second minute, I don't know if, if God, you're going to do it, but you know, one minute you're believing, one minute you're doubting. And so God wants us to come to him with confidence. When we begin to ask God, there has to be a level of confidence, knowing that, you know what? God is going to do this in my life. I believe it and I receive it by faith. Praise the living God. I want you to look at, let's go back into, into Luke chapter 11. Um, and I'll show you the analogy that Jesus gives. Luke 11. Um, I want you to look at, um, uh, at verse 10. Uh -huh. But look at verse 11. If a son asks for bread from any of you fathers on the earth here, uh -huh, will you give him a stone? If he asks for fish, are you going to give him a snake or a serpent? Uh -huh. If you then, you who are wicked fathers, you know how to give good gifts to your children. How much more will your father in heaven? Oh, give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. So if you don't know that the Holy Spirit is with you, perhaps you've never asked. And here, particularly, the Lord begins, please someone help this child. The, the Lord begins particularly addressing the, the fact that the most important things to ask for are spiritual things. Amen. Yeah? Amen. Spiritual things. The like Holy Spirit. There need to be a demand in the spiritual realm. Amen. You asking God, asking God and tell him, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Let me not walk an empty life and the Lord will do it for you. Amen. So I believe that in, as we seek the Lord asking him, the thing that he's about to do for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Now in the Bible, people ask for all kinds of things. I'll show you a few examples. Um, and, and God answered their prayer. Amen. Amen. God gives a command in Psalms chapter 2 verse number 8. Psalms chapter 2 verse number 8. What does the word say? It says, ask me for the nations 
Uh huh. And I'll do what? And I'll give you the ends of the earth as your what? As your inheritance. Oh, come on. Please stay with me. Please stay with me. Don't let this little girl, uh, you know, please kill the service. We need, we need to stay focused. Listen to me. It says, ask me of nations and I'll give you the ends of the earth as what? As your inheritance. One of the important things that, that you must understand is you can ask for nation. But when God begins to answer, he brings more than a nation. He says, I'm going to bring ends of the earth. Which simply means that, that, that you need to understand when we ask, we are only giving him permission. But when it comes to do, he does more than we have asked for. Because the scripture says, I will do exceedingly, abundantly, above what we do what? We ask for above what we imagine. Oh, he's going to do above. He wants to do beyond. He wants to operate beyond what we even understand. Oh, somebody help me shout a big hallelujah. There is power in understanding the mystery of asking. Learn to kneel by your bedside. Simple things. Ask God. Amen. Like favor in the morning to go to your boss. Ask simple things that God, bless me. Let me not be stranded today. But Lord, move in my life. Let God know that he wants, you, want me to, you want him to be a part of your daily life. I don't understand believers who begin projects without involving God. Praise God. How can you begin a very important thing in your life without involving God? You begin a house construction, not involving God. You, 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 uh, uh, you lay foundation of a house, not involving God. Leave alone even that. You begin a relationship, not asking God. Praise the Lord. Everything, simple things like this. Be buy a new car. Talk to God about it. You know, when God is involved in our lives, He's going to show up mightily. Learn to be a child before God. Please, oh, come on, help me. No matter how you are anointed, you're, you are a child before God. Amen. No matter how powerful you become, you are God's child. Amen. Reverend Nancy said it better. Maybe some of you did not catch it. Before God, you are not reverend. Before God, you're not archbishop. Before God, you're not pastor. Before God, you're simply a child. Learn the basics of prayer begin by asking. And the problem is that most of us have not even mastered the asking part. And so because we've, we've been talked about demons, we've been talked about so many things, we jump right into breaking and destroying. But the beginning of prayer is as simple as, Lord, I'm here as your child. If you're back on your rent, talk to God. Simple prayers like, Lord, I know you know that you must work for it. But it doesn't bother you to ask God. Even the things that you assume you can bring to yourself, learn to ask him. Amen. That is what makes him God in your life. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Psalms 2 verse 8, I've told you. Ask for what? Uh, oh, come on, talk to me, church. Psalms 2, verse 8. Ask me for... Can, you, can we read it? Because sometimes we assume that people know things. And Psalms 2, verse 8. But I think you need a microphone for the sake of those who are online. Let, let, let your microphone be on. I don't know why. Okay, uh, yeah. now it's on. 2-8. Uh -huh. It says, ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance and the ends of the earth for your possession. Ask, ask, I like what the NIV says. It says, ask me of nations. Mm. Listen to me. Some of you uh, have never even asked God for America. And you've settled for Waltham. Okay, I, I don't want to go into that stuff. But you can ask God for the nations. Oh, Lord, we are asking for nations. Ask and I shall the nations to you, O oh God. As a cry of my heart, distance shows, let the earth. Nobody here knows any music, praise God. You're going to help me sing along with me. Ask and I shall give you. We need to ask for nations. Oh my God. I'm stepping up to ask for nations. We're asking God for Europe. 
We're asking God for America. We're asking God for Africa. We're asking God for the ends of the earth. To be, a, to be a, our inheritance. Oh my God. I deliver you from being a local champion. May God give you nations. Nations for your possession. Nations for your taking. You will take nations by the power of God. I don't know who I'm talking to, but right now God is about to break borders from your life. Because you've asked for nations. The ends of the earth shall be our inheritance. I deliver you from being landlocked in America. May God deliver you from being landlocked in the US, being landlocked in Massachusetts, being landlocked in that state where you are. I pray that nations may, may you live a borderless life. May nations begin to open for you by the power of the Holy Ghost. Some people, my God, are so interesting. At their funeral, they are not only mourned by a village. They're not only mourned by a family. Some people, are, God has given them grace that when they die, they are mourned by nations. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. That is going to be the story of my life. Man, the break die. In the evening of time, when life is unwinding, nations, people, you, 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 oh God, the battle. People will stand in the streets of Paris and say, that man touched my life. If someone will stand in the streets of Johannesburg. My God. Years have passed, but we still talk about people. May you be an influence to the nations. Ask for nations. Amen. Don't fear to ask. And God will do it for you. Luke chapter number 10. The disciples are crying out for people. They're crying. They're like, there are no workers in church. Luke 10, verse 1 and verse 2. Uh -huh. Ten verse one and two. Yeah. The seventy the seventy sent out. That's the heading from one to two. After these things, yeah. the Lord appointed seventy others also and sent them two by two. Two by two. Before yeah. his face yeah. into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Yeah. Then he said to them. Yeah. The harvest truly is great. There's a great harvest. But the laborers are few. But there are no workers. Therefore, pray that the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And I say is ask. Oh my God. Pray. Ask that the Lord will send laborers. I challenge you. Every time you see something missing, learn to tell God, thank you Lord, I pray you send me people like this oh on behalf of fireplace church we are asking god for laborers that, that amen has gone to holiday i said we are asking god for laborers i call upon people that are going to be in the ushering people that, that, that are going to play these instruments we are asking them from god people that are going to sing in the choir we are asking them from god no witnesses in the house. We're asking God for prayer warriors and intercessors. We're asking God for kingdom partners that are going to support this house. We are asking God that people that are going to come, that are going to give carelessly to the work of God until the work comes up from this level to the next level. Somebody shout amen. We're asking God for preachers and evangelists in the house. We're asking God for anointed men and women of God in the house. We're asking God for the prophetic and the apostolic in the house. In the mighty name of Jesus, ask God for laborers. It is a biblical mystery to talk to God. Whenever you see something missing, something lacking, ask God. Can I speak under the prophetic utterance? By the grace of God over my life, I decree and declare before the end of this year, I said December of, tw of 29th, I prophesy you shall look back and say, see what God has done. I ask this from God and he has brought it my way. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Tell your neighbor, I'm going to ask the Lord. I'm going to talk to God about it. And you see, you need to understand that you cannot stop until God answers. Stay in the place of asking and believing and having confidence. He will do it for you. He says, if you earthly fathers cannot give your children fish, I mean a serpent for fish, stones for bread, and scorpions for eggs, 
What about me? Who has got love unconditional? There is nothing that God will withhold from you. He will not withhold goodness from you. He will not withhold favor from you. He will not withhold power from you. He says, now ask him for the Holy Spirit. Oh, he that lacks wisdom, ask the Lord who gives generously. There is nothing God cannot give it to you. Some of you will sleep tonight when you are, uh, okay, I don't know for better lack of a word, when you're making foolish decisions. But because you've asked God, by morning, you shall be a wise man. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Do you know Solomon went to bed stupid? Ah, yeah, yeah. If you have a neighbor, tell them, my God can change your life. Solomon went to bed when he's a stupid boy little stupid teenager who cannot rule over Israel but when you went to the altar Bible says and he laid a sacrifice first Kings chapter number three laid a sacrifice on the altar and God received it and in the dream at the altar in Gibeon the Lord came down and said what can I give to you blank check anything you want I'll give to you and the Bible declares and the boy did not ask for fame he did not ask for his head's enemies he did not ask for anything else he said give me wisdom and understanding to lead your people and God said you have asked for a good thing and because you've asked for a good thing I will give you wisdom I will, I will give you wealth I'll give you enemy. I'll give you your enemies I'll give you everything you need even, even pray for and God gave him understanding. The Bible says there's no king after Solomon who has been as wise. It's only Jesus who said that the one who's greater than Solomon is here. But Solomon was the wisest man ever lived. Am I preaching well tonight? You need to understand something, people of God. He went to bed, the stupid boy. But with one interaction with the Holy Ghost, he woke up the wisest man on the earth because he asked from the Lord. The next day, two women came to him in the palace. And the women were prostitutes. Are you still hearing me? One had slept on the baby in the night and, and the baby had died. And they could not tell. One, the woman who had killed the baby took the, the one who was living and replaced with, with the one who was dead. Because they are prostitutes, probably they, they didn't even know how their babies look like. So we understand their story. And the Bible says, and they brought the baby who is alive to, the, to, to King Solomon. That case is hard to judge without evidence. That court case would have gone on for years. Bring DNA. Do this. Let us see. How, how can this be your child? You know, the, the argument is endless. There are no camera, no, no forensic footage, nothing to look up to. But by the wisdom he had received from the presence of God, he said, give me a sword. Give me a sword. And the Bible says, and he said, I'm going to cut the baby into two pieces. And he put the sword up. And the woman who was the owner of the baby shouted, King, don't kill. Don't kill. The other woman was in the corner saying, Salah! Salah, Salah. Nzen papa tiye saidi eno. Salah mua kati on peche eno. Solomon discovered by the wisdom he said there is no woman who can produce a baby and want the baby to be cut but you see that looks ordinary wisdom because we have read it but at that time that was amazing nobody could believe that the man judged the case so wisely Bible says people, people like Queen Sheba they journeyed from Ethiopia to come and hear the man talk he, he wrote proverbs, a thousand proverbs. He wrote songs and hymns in his lifetime. Even today, book of Ecclesiastes, the book of Proverbs, all by Solomon, a man of wisdom. He built the biggest temple. Even up now, the wall of his temple still stands in Jerusalem. 4,000 years plus. What kind of wisdom is that? God is about to give you wisdom that nobody has ever had in your father's house. He that lacks wisdom, ask and God will give it to you. He gives generously.
Come on, walk with together in America. You talk about Gezi. Give me wisdom, oh God. Take a bubble. Tell you your mixing being again. There's nothing as big as there's no big. The worst mix that you can ever have is to be born again and not wise. So I've chosen my words very, very well. Praise the living God. Because you have to be wise. You're close to God. You, cannot, you have to be wise. So ask God if you lack wisdom. And the problem is that some of you don't even know what you lack. You have to know what you're lacking. That is what I lack. I need it. Then you ask God to give it to you. Are you going to ask the Lord? Oh, praise the Lord. Shabagadaya. Raise your hand and declare, I will call upon the name of God. How many of you have ever read, I have got about five minutes, maybe. How many of you have ever read the book of 1 Corinthians and read about Jabez? There is something I want to show you there that is very, very fascinating. 1 Corinthians, 1 Chronicles, about 1 Chronicles, not Corinthians. 1 Chronicles, chapter 4. But how many of you, how, how many of you realize from, from chapter 1 of Chronicles, it is talking about families from Adam, Seth, Enos, and they write. I bet nobody has ever taken time to, 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 to read the Bible from First Corinthians, First Chronicles chapter 1 to chapter 4. Like it's the most boring part of the Bible. Because you're going to say, and, and, and Jokonita became the father of Almond. And Almond became. So by the time you read, you get bored. You're like, what? Eh, four chapters. Names. Genealogy. Of people and the kings. The sons of Israel. The sons of Isaac. Sons of Caleb. Everything. The concubines. It's like a family tree. Then all of a sudden, in chapter 4 and verse 9. Somebody receives an extra writing on his life. His name is Jabez. He receives an extra writing upon his life. <laughs> Verse 9, everybody. Uh -huh. Now, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. He was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called him Jabez, uh -huh. saying, because I bore him in pain. The name Jabez means I gave the guy, I gave back to this guy in pain. But Jabez, knowing his history, knowing that he was born in pain, born in confusion, what does Jabez do in verse number 10? And Jabez called on God of Israel. And saying, Jabez called upon the God of Israel. Oh, that you would bless the, me. In the only way it will change in your life is when you learn to call upon the God of Israel. If God can intervene in it, it doesn't matter how you were born. Can I declare you're going to stand out in your father's house? There is a whole genealogy, but Jabez talked about why? Because he prayed. He cried upon, the, upon God. That, and then what did he pray? Oh, that you would bless me oh, indeed. Oh, that you would bless me indeed. And enlarge my territory. Enlarge my territory. That your hand would be with me. That your hand would be with me. And that you would keep me from evil. Uh-huh. That I may not cause pain. Uh-huh. So God granted God me. granted his what? He granted his request. The man prayed. One line in scripture. Do you know how many ministries of Jabez are in the world? Jabez International Prayer Warriors. Jabez, Jabez, Jabez all over the world. But you know why? Simple scripture like this. He popped up. Did not do a miracle. He did not heal the sick. He did not raise the dead. But, but you go. You go on Google and put in Jabez Ministries. You'll be shocked. Jabez. Not every name in the Bible, the all these names you see, people even care. <laughs> Some of you think names don't matter, but names matter. How many of you are looking for a, a, a baby's name, your, your next baby? And then you go in this book and then you say, let me look for a name. Shamia. Yewakimu. Zedekia, Amunoni, Chizibu, 
But people, you gonna look for kids who are called Jabez. How many of you? How, how many of you hear people naming somebody Escariot? It's rare. Not all the names in the Bible are good names just because they're in the Bible. Praise the Lord. And Jabez cried. Your prayer life would distinguish you in your father's house. Okay. You've been there saying your amens. I'll leave you alone. Second Samuel. I want to show you, I want to show you that people in the Bible prayed about everything. Uh, David prayed about this guy who has a problem. Uh, if you have someone who's bothering you, go and pray about them. Second Samuel chapter number, number 15. There's a man called here Ayuthopel. And... Uh, he was a very crazy guy. This guy was, was David's uh, number five. He was a great advisor, but he was leaving him. So he knew that if this guy goes to the side of his enemies, the enemies are going to beat him. Have you ever had somebody in, on your team that if they go away, they carry all the secrets, they'll be very dangerous to you. <laughs> so Ayuthopel was that kind. He joined up with Absalom. And he, he had the ability of destroying David. But one day after he had been surrounded and engulfed, Second Samuel chapter number 15, verse 31. What does David do? 15, 31. Yeah. Then someone told David, uh -huh. saying, Ahithophel is among the conspirators with Absalom. Someone told David that Ahithophel has joined your haters, has joined your people who are conspiring. What did David do? And David said, uh -huh. Oh Lord, I pray. And David prayed. He did not mama. He did not say, let me call Aethopel. Give me his number. Aethopel, why did you leave me? Hello? Aethopel. No vam. Karen call him dead. David says, let me talk to God about it. Uh-huh. Oh Lord, I pray. I pray. Turn the counsel of Ahithophel into <laughs> foolishness. Turn the wisdom that the guy had when he was under my cover to become foolishness. That's a powerful prayer. Immediately God made him a foolish man. Now it happened when David had come to the top <laughs> of the mountain uh -huh. where he worshipped God forever. Who should, eh? mm -hmm. No, yeah. I want, I want to, to look at verses number 34. Yeah? 34. Yes. But if you return to the city, yeah, and say to Absalom, I will be your servant. O oh, king, I was with your father's servant previously. Yeah. So I will now also be your servant. Then you may defeat the council of Ahithophel for me. Uh -huh. And do you not have Zadok, the Abiathar, the priest with you Listen, here? It says, the only way you could fight, the Bible says this guy's council was like uh, a God has spoken. He was powerful in, in his mind. He was a powerhouse. But David has prayed, turn the mind and the wisdom of Ahithophel into foolishness. I speak to all your conspirers and conspiracies around you. Whoever is fighting you using other people, I decree and declare their wisdom is becoming foolishness tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, they will give wrong advice. By the powerful name of Jesus Christ. I want you to look at um, verses 15 of, of 2 Samuel chapter 16. 15 because of time. Just to show you how God answered the prayer of David. Yes. Title is The Advice of Ahithophel. Yeah. Meanwhile, Absalom and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem. Uh, uh huh. And Ahithophel was with him. Okay, look at verse 20. Yep. 20. Then Absalom said to Ahithophel, Absalom goes to him and says, Give advice as to what they should do. Ahithophel, you are a great advisor. You know how to do things. I want to take my father's kingdom. Give me advice. Remember in the previous chapter, David has prayed. Turn his advice into what? Foolishness. Foolishness. Now he comes here and he says, Give advice. What should we do? Verses 21. Look at the man. And Ahithophel said to Absalom, uh -huh. Go into your father's concubines. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry. Uh -huh. Go into your father's concubines, uh -huh. whom he has left to keep the house and all Israel. Uh -huh. And you. Wait. Uh -huh. Go into your father's concubines, uh -huh. 
-hmm. whom he has left to keep the house and all Israel, uh -huh. will hear that you are abode by your father. Uh -huh. Then the hands of all who are with you will be strong. Yeah. So they pitched. So, uh -huh. so they pitched a tent for Absalom on uh -huh. the top of the house. On the roof. <laughs> the whole city is watching. Uh -huh. And Absalom went into his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. Absalom went and slept with the concubine of his father. When the, can you imagine a man who used to give the best military advice? Look at what he's advising Absalom, because God has turned his wisdom into what. I pre prophesy your, an your prayer shall be answered. May your enemies begin to get wrong advice. Oh, you made a kumagulu go to Gendewa Fibida and the Iwege is Sunday. Don't miss Sunday, 11 a.m. You're going to be, it's going to be so powerful. Praise God. Amen. Invite somebody. I'm going to be talking about, the, I'm, to, I'm still talking about prayer. Amen. But I pray by the end of this season, you're going to know how to pray. I decree and declare that anybody who has been holding anything that belongs to you, after you pray, they shall release it. Twale chitiwa Twalo buinza Twala matendo Biona bibio Twale chiti E chitiwa Twalo buinza Twala matendo Biona bibio Twale chitiwa Twale chitiwa Twalo buinza Twala matendo Twala Everybody come on sing it. Twala. Hey. Twala. 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 Pio na vivio. Holy Polo Goma Yayuda. We were Wulu Guma. And what does he want now? We cut on that to Omoka, we to sa toile chitiwa. Hey, Oli Polo Goma Yayuda, Bo Wuluguma, and what does he want? Hey, we cut on that to Omoka, we to sa toile chitiwa. Hey, Twala, everybody, Twala. Twala, you're not vivio. Twala, 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 you're not vivio. Say, twale chitiwa, twalo bui. Sing it again, Twale Chitiwa. Twale Chiti, Twalo Buiza, Twala Matendo, Twala Matendo, Abange, Piona Bio. Oli Catondo Wetisa. Otonye senkuba, eliaba lunji na babi Gwe katonda tu omuka, gwe tusa Twale chitiwa Olipolo goma ya yuda Wo ulukuma, endwa dezi wona Gwe katonda tu omuka, gwe tusa Twalo buiza Twala Lift your hands and tell Twala, Twala, hey, Twala. Your Navi view, everybody. Your Navi view, Twala, 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 hey, Twala, Twala. Your Navi view. 
Sai, o oh, sai, o oh, sai, o oh, sai, igual é su. O oh, sai, igual é su. Gue gutu a mãe, o sai, igual. Sing the songs of the black. Aleluia. O sai, igual. Lift your hands and tell him, Lord, let your blood speak in my life. Let your blood speak in every area of my life. We're good to our man. We're good to our man. Hey, we're to Jah. Hey, we're to Hey, we're to Jah. We're to Jah. Abangi. Sai, o 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 sai, Everybody of the same. Hey, where to church? Where to church? I just said, Oh, where to church? Hallelujah, 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 oh hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah, oh, Sana Kabaka, hallelujah, oh, Sana Chitiba, hallelujah, oh, Sana Chitiba, hallelujah, oh, Sana Kabaka, hallelujah, oh, Sana Hallelujah, Hallelujah, oh, 
sanity, Uma yumba get to Sulu, O sanity, Alleluia, O Santa Caraca, we to Saba. Watch Destiny Matters here on Rest TV, Thursday and Sunday nights with Pastor Charles Casabanti.